tough, but Nyx doesn't really look like he does much in this game. Versus these heroes, they're all just kind of I agree. these big yeah. brutes. Yeah. No int heroes, really. I think uh, Optic's yeah, I game plan is like very... Is, they're either going to win with like one Rosh snowballing, taking all the towers, and then taking the second Rosh and ending, um, or they're going to lose. And I, and I think that their win condition is harder to pull off, kind of like we were talking about yesterday, that the team that has the easier time winning. And I don't think like Optic can't win. I just think that the Huskar has to have a good start, and they have to snowball out of the lanes. It does look like LGD will go with a standard lane set with tidying the off lane, trying to pull the creep wave. That's another option. Yeah, so rather than aggro him, just go for that creep wave pull. Oh, Huskar should be probably happy with that. If I'm not getting aggro tri lane as Huskar, then I'm, I'm happy overall. Let's see where QQQ looks to spend his time no, here. He'll probably start. He'll probably start in mid. He'll just go mid and top. How much can they? Yeah, it's one of those weird things because Morph is like a hero you want to kind of guarantee that safe, easy start to. But these are definitely two supports that are not going to be able to do much to Omni Knight. I guess Nyx can just like mana burn him. I mean, it doesn't do a crazy amount, but. Yeah. Morphling will get as far regardless, even if he gets pressured early. Yeah. Off to glory. Omni's got really nice farm patterns. You're a big fan of his Battle Fury style. Oh, dude. That was inspiring. That hero farm so fast if you, you get tried a good start. It. I That's remember I was watching you and you tried it. Yeah, it worked. You won. Yeah, no, it's a hero that like if you have a good start, but th that's like a huge if. I mean, is I think as far as like one position carriers go, probably one of the biggest like just fa like straight up farmers. Yeah, yeah, he is. He was like he was the guy who went mask and managed every hero at TI, regardless of hero. His team just picked him some kind of hero that would just AFK farm. Okay, so they're prioritizing. Just initiating with, or starting with the Morphling. They're having the Undying, zoning the Omni Knight bottom. The Nyx can't really do it too well. Nyx is going to go top, try to pressure a bit and give a fly space, but... Yeah. Just priorities. I think if you look at LGD's draft and you say, look, Morph's a hero that's going to win them the game, send your best zoning yeah. support to that lane. As much as Undying can secure Maybe's lane or could help pressure the Husker, if you think Morphling doesn't care about a Husker, then just, yeah, secure his lane. History, else falls into place. When we watched the Morphling game, uh, where they also shut down the Lundred between EG and... and uh, it was Cole Kingwin. Oh, Cole yeah. Kingwin. There you go. Thank you. I knew it was Kingwin. <laughs> yeah. Cole Kingwin. Uh, it was one of those things where they they, they spurred the Mor Morphling's game like by prioritizing his game, but also shutting down the pace setter of... Uh, of, oh my gosh, complexity with the Lone Druid. And in this game, though, Omni Knight's purpose is going to be repel later. Like, he's going to be useful. Um, so it's like they're going to give their Morphling a good start, but it's not going to be like the, uh, you know, double the effect that they had in the Cole King one series. So I think that this is something where Morphling is susceptible to like really early timings being hit on the enemy course. And Huskar is one of those heroes. So I think it's definitely something to look out for that Morphling may just be ignored in this game. Like, he, he's a hero that can be ignored if they are able to force objectives really early. It's like, uh, for the most part, pretty even laying set up here. I want to harass one of this puck, but... It gets really, really hard when the TA gets level 5. Yeah. That's pretty much the fact that you just lose the lane. He brought a salve. I wonder if it got actually cancelled. I think this is his second salve now. Denied. You can say, tough matchup, and they didn't even... Like, they had the puck early on, so they didn't opt to switch their lanes up, which they could have theoretically done. Looks like Huskar doing pretty well in the top lane. Optic did end up bringing the Night Stalker over there, so already sitting 8-1, despite Tide's, the early pressure. Tide's doing well too, though. Eight last hits for himself. Through that, getting that top pull. Wait. If you're Huskar, you mainly just want your own farm early, yeah. right? Get the fast Starmlet out. Yeah, definitely a hero that plays off his own timings rather than like limiting the or slowing down the enemy timings. For the all-knowing one. Well, overall thoughts here, gents. Uh, no real adjust major adjustments by the teams. Are you happy with the lane so far? I'm happy for. I think LGD is pretty happy. I think this. I mean, Morphling's free farming. He's got really good tools in the mid game uh, with his morph ability. He can morph the Omni Knight. He can give himself repel. He can morph the Ogre. Give himself Bloodlust. He's got some good stuff later on once he gets that OP available. I, I feel like when I saw the OG like supports, I ex expected them to at least win one one of the three lanes. It doesn't feel like they've won any, any of the lanes. They haven't lost any, but to me, that's what LGD wanted. They just wanted stable lanes. Tides are here that wants to farm. So is the uh, Morphling. Puck wants his levels. That's why he's mid. Um, the fact that OG haven't won any lanes with Ogre and Nightstalker, to me, is a, a bit concerning. 
Oh god, when optic, getting so when optic yeah. plays OG, if they play them, it's gonna be every time OG I cast optic. Games, every confused. time I <laughs> every time I cast optic games, I keep saying, you know, I'll, oh, I, yeah. I say OG. I think it's uh, I, I will say that like while I think both teams are getting what they want at the laning stage, even though LGD, is, is, like I agree with everything you guys said. I think that OG or you know, optic <laughs> is, is completely content like with their Omni Knight getting whatever he gets, and then the two as long as their two cores, they have two very snowbally like reliant on the landing stage cores, and they're and they're getting what they need, even if the even if the tight hunter somehow has I, I don't know exactly He's how that 19. happens. Yeah, I don't know how he has more CS. Like I you know I, that's I play that lane a lot. Maybe the Knicks just had that larger of an impact on the on the top lane, but um, at the end of the day, if Huskar's having a decent start, like a lot of times Huskar games that are ugly are the ones where he's like, like in that TNC game, he was like level five at ten minutes in on Huskar. Yeah. I guess in order to win a lane, Optic would have had to have sacked the lane as well. So the outcome here is that they, much like LDD, have managed to get farm and levels in all their lanes. Yeah, they they don't like they're just saying Omni Knight, you do you. Like we're gonna make sure our TA and Huskar have good starts. Yeah, and Omni with the levels and farm will be have the levels he needs to in empower this this Huskar. Exactly, he's just a steroid for them after all. Uh, Optic uh, gonna bring PPD down to the bottom lane. Is the first night time now? See if I there's any early like, I mean, I, it's daytime, sure, but that that zero to four minutes Night Soak is still incredibly strong just because of his level one nuke and his base stats. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Sometimes Night Stalker has been delegated to becoming like a, a lane support, like for ranged heroes especially, because ranged heroes like Huskar are kind of vulnerable to like dual melee off lanes like this, where they just run in your face and and harass you. So Night Stalker can kind of just be like a meat shield in the safe lane. So it's like another way teams have taken this hero who's been getting a lot of. Uh, priority in the picking. Uh, just having heroes with multiple purposes in the laning stage uh, makes them more viable. Oh, oh, could be the first blood here, bottom. Um, that mango. Oh, should be okay. TP's out. He's got a soul ring. He, he's got everything he needs on, on, an, on an Omni. He even has a shrine, so he'll be back, back bottom in no time at all. Oh, yeah, TP shrine. Nobody's really getting shut down this game. Yeah, all the I cores, all the cores, all the cores are cores, happy. Yeah. Lowest is 17 at six minutes. So. Support levels look pretty even, slightly LGD favored with the Knicks. Yeah, for such like snowball-y uh, lineups, I'm surprised like everyone's having a good game. That's usually, <laughs> that's usually like... This surely can't last. This yeah. is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying like usually it's the opposite. Like everyone's having like a bad game because everyone's <laughs> focusing on shutting each other down, but both teams are just playing for their own, own fun. Yeah, and it's such a patch where offline just can get shut down so easily with yeah. the, the new creep equilibrium. Need some trouble here. Oh. Trap coming through, yeah, and first blood design. Good rotation nice snipes there. First night Night Stalker, level yeah. 3, stronger than most cores. Yep. So maybe could be in trouble here if he's not careful. The haste Has the haste still. But they're in pursuit. Wait, he's, he's got an extra circle. The haste is wearing off though. He's got two nose, a wand, and a circlet. He's going to uh, Kila too. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of, I couldn't think of anything else that included <laughs> yeah. in there. I was like, I guess. Right. <laughs> Let's go on drums. Invokers can do it. Get drums now. Uh, there you go. He's not an offliner though. Move special phase yeah. drums every hero. Are there many ancient sacks for T? I wonder if that, that's going to be one of the big things maybe if the for optic to kind of accelerate. But. I didn't really see them prioritize. Yeah, I didn't see ogre much. stacking at all. Oh, pursuing out maybe here. Got the silence, got the silence off. Can they bring him down? Soul, oh, rip. soul rip. That soul rip was so much help. Heals him up. They had to quit the tombstone for I this. Tombstone is problematic. Oh, they stunned him during the during the e. Oh, dead. Is it? Oh, oh the TP. E. Coil. Oh, they get him, but heavy Coil. commitment there. That was a Sansa. six stun by the Knicks. He like did it right when the Night Stalker used his pa uh, hunter in the night. Yep. Still all the all the cores overall pretty happy with this early laning stage. Morph took an early point in ultimate. Something I, I like actually thought was pretty good against Omni Knight specifically because you just uh, when he's manning up on you, you turn into him and then heal yourself just to get the good trade. Gives you sustain in the lane. Yeah. Too. There's an Omni, you just heal yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you come back out of out of yeah, the yeah, yeah. out of the ultimate with your normal health mm -hmm. that you started with. Like Morphling takes old usually at like level six or level fourteen, <laughs> so it's either like really useful or not useful at all. So it's like the first big move for for LGD. Do, when this night ends, do we see a gank coming? They, they don't have like much tower forcing, so it's kind of like I, I. It's a good question. I think they will play around Tide Ravage, but at the same time, I don't think Optic will give them a team fight. I think I think it's going to be more on Optic's timings than LG, LGD. I think LGD's got a Morphling. 
and they just got to make it to when Morphling's powerful enough to fight, and they just got to make sure that Huskar and TA don't snowball off the Speaking of that, Huskar jumps in here top lane, but the uh -oh. Ravage is waiting if the Tide has the mana for it. Moves on to Pycat. The TP comes from Ahmed. That's they huge. get the kill on the Huskar. That's never never nice as a Huskar dying at the 8-minute mark when you've had a free lane. Well, had a farming Did lane. Did he carapace the ult? Huskar? Carapace after with the ult, I think. Oh, okay, because it looked like his ult did like 70% of Huskar's health. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it was afterwards just on a burning spear. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's like something as Huskar where you're... You're... Oh, mid lane. Uh -oh. Could be finding another kill. CC and C snapping the coil, tries to back away, but they stun him, they orb through, and... Doesn't get him off. They'll get the kill again. Not a good start. Oh, he did go Bracer. He's going drums. Yeah, yeah he went Bracer. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's going drums, but could uh, be casual Bracer. I think he just acknowledges, like, he has to make space for this Morphling, so he's going to have to stats. just stats yeah. fight. Consistent, like, snipe. ramping up his power yeah, rather than going for the big items. PPD on a long journey, but Morphling uh, PPD cut special him off. Here. Yeah, I was just saving space his Space created. He's fine. Go back the other way. He's <laughs> fine. No, he's actually, it's not even worth chasing uh, he him. He might gentlemen. actually be fine. <laughs> they could chase him, but it's like, why? Who cares? For an ogre? <laughs> I wish I had this life. You know, like you're Sakari and you're out of position. And, yeah. Tidehunter and Puck are oh, coming in. Well, maybe he wants to make it worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this happened. Still I can't believe it. Happened. Now FY's in on the action. We've got four LGD heroes. Clarity and get the TP on. Two of yeah. them gave up, but the. 25 mana, force the ult. Still going. And oh my God. Be able to bring Meanwhile, back. more important kills happening is hey, Ame will fall. No, no, this set that kill up, so this was definitely the more important kill, you know. <laughs> How'd they get the kill? I guess the Night Stalker Silence, he got in, even though it's daytime, he got in for a second with the, the Huskar. Yeah, Huskar does tons of damage at this stage. He has the yeah. armlet complete. Brown Boots armlet. And the Vendetta. Try for you, but of course not the Vendetta. Radiance bottom tower has uninvited guests. With Ravage and Vendetta, they can definitely kind of try and make some plays here. But Yao yeah, running right by a sentry there. Perhaps OG gonna set up. Yeah, LGD doing a good job. Like they gank the Huskar, and they yeah, they also gank the TA. So they recognize like TA and Huskar are just the pace setters. Like if they don't snowball, this game's ours. So they're really prioritizing the right heroes, and they gotta keep doing this in my opinion. Like TA and Huskar. Like, they hit their timings way earlier than Morphling. He's going drum. Oh. <laughs> we were joking, but it looks like that's a thing. Oh, they lost mid tower. Lost his tower yeah, yeah I didn't notice that. When did that happen? That must have been during the PPD chase, because he was. <laughs> that was all PPD. It, it actually had to. He got them a morph kill and a free tower. Yeah, wow. That was, that was huge. That's some next level Dota. That mid tower is, like, really important for Roche contesting, so that, that cannot be. Like, understated how important that tower is. They are gonna find potentially a big kill here, though, as they look for CC and C, but he's got a shrine. shrine with the help of the Night Stalker. So LGD hesitating to move up, but they've brought in four heroes. Defend the tombstone. They really lack catch. Like, their only real, like, casual stun that isn't an ult is Nyx, so. And they're not getting that early blink on the puck either. We'll see a stun here on Soxa. How much do they want to commit for this kill? Orbing forward. Flaps away. Oh, the miss. Coil has to be blown. And meanwhile, yeah. Huskar doing what he wants. This is the dream Huskar game. I mean, in terms of you just get to turn your armor on and take the tower. LTD is getting split up a bit, yeah. They are pressuring bottom, at least. I didn't notice in the draft, but LG really does lack catch. So uh, you're seeing it when an ogre can run pretty much, like, you know, zigzag across the entire side of the map until he dies. That, that tends to happen though when you have an undying, right? Yeah. A lot of the games you have an undying. And they last picked so it too, so it's something they were fine with it being the case. Going straight into the link is no, bra no uh, upgrade to treads. Something I constantly don't know if I agree with or not. Because the boots of travel are so nice on Morphling, and I think if you want to fight, then you go for the treads. But I think he, like, there. I don't think it, there's any time in the first 20 to 30 minutes that a Morphling can fight a, a Huskar Omni heads up. I think he just doesn't want to wait for that Lincoln. Like, the only way he dies is if he gets That is true, too. Stalker, right? It so. does slow down your Lincoln's timing as well. But almost every time they skip treads, it's, they also go back for the boots of travel. Yeah. He's kind of Fair hoping enough. for that scenario like top where he can play the cleanup, where his team set a kill for him, he TPs in and yeah. gets, like, the, the Huskar. Anti-mage team fight contribution. Exactly, yeah. You this... can you can contribute to a team fight with just your battle fury, but you need to make sure you're the last hero. Yeah. Show up. Exactly, yeah, yeah. GD. Coil coming through, they're gonna commit here towards PPD, but the Ogre's not the one you really wanna dive for as QQQ gets caught out even through the Soul Rip, will go down, and now the chase is on. They have the Ravage, but 
Optic are too tanky. I'm not sure they can take this. They'll try it. Ravage. Big impale follow up, but the Huskarp, he lives through this, can turn it. The Omni ult comes out, and now Ame is on the run, yet chewing right through him. Goes for the self repel, tries to get away to safety, but still pursuit. Dropping the traps, waving out an LGD. Round two of this fight, gonna be lacking some of those big team fight alts. It's just the cores of Optic running right through them. Pycat diving forward. They'll find QQQ as well. Three drop in the end, and Ultra make it four. I can't believe they took for this maybe fight. two. Yeah, I can't believe they fought into the Omni Huskar. That that nah. stuff is so like it can't kill you because they can't like no way of getting on top of you with the Huskar. But if you run into the Omni Huskar like that, like that's Huskar's dream. He's gonna saving like you know hero that keeps him alive, and then he just wails on you the entire yeah. fight. And Huskar is definitely one of those carries that can get ultra kills and rampages 15 minutes into the game. It's the strongest point of Omni Knight's game, pretty much. Yes. Same with Huskar too, though. He just hit Armlet, and he's got an Omni Knight with him too. He's got Bloodlust and. Vision from Night Stalker. Like, even though they don't have team fight, if you can't kill Huskar, that's your team fight. Like, he just oh, kills no, you. Oh, Popping those drums, trying to get away. Soxa chasing him out, has to drop the coil. Still, though, snapping it keeps he might him going. Still be dead. He needs another old. He's chasing him with the phase boots. He's like fast. Nobody TPing in, but in the mid lane, also TA diving at the same time for FY. They're just spreading him so thin on the side of LGD. Like, they're just getting. Like chased around or chasing it, like it feels like optics getting a lot more off the map. Especially with those early towers going down. He's going straight satanic. As a husk player yourself, seems a bit unusual. Do you th do you think it, it works this game? Well, usually you don't go straight satanic because they have like some semblance of like an, an, a mischance or something that makes it so you need a BKB, and that's why you don't go satanic because you can't reliably hit people with it. But because he has the Omni Knight, and they actually only have like Ravage and Nick stun yeah. for him to stop him from auto attacking. Uh, he, I, I like it. Like it, it's one of the few heroes in the game that you can go early Satanic and, he, and like validate it. Yep. I watch Ace play that hero, and he goes four halberds. Yeah, I, I would see. <laughs> That's the other route. I was, uh, this game, there's not many heroes you really need the halberd against that much. It's good, I, for, it's good for the Lincolns on the morph, though. True. They have low physical damage on LGD, so going like uh, evasion or armor yeah. isn't as necessary this game either. I'm just saying, as, as one of the few carries that I've ever built early Satanic on is Huskar, so yeah. it, situationally, and I agree with it in this game that it's a it's a good option because they just can't stop him from auto tagging. Nice pick off there. Yeah, I'm gonna snipe the courier, but. That's why being pursued here as well, and you can see LG just not wanting to fight Optic head on after the way that last engagement went. So we'll spread out the map here. A tier two bottom is gonna fall. I can't believe I predicted the same team as fog. Dude, I'm telling you, you guys, it's the, the <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It's, it's not over. There's still a morph link. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That, we got Husker the is online. Morph bank. is not online. Yet. Optic's doing. I mean, Optic's doing a great job of having yeah. both their cores be really farmed. Look, like, CCNC. I like that he went for that blink first, so he can get involved in the early fights because with their peak timings. In no way am I saying this zone. game's over. It's just like it does. Like Optic is getting everything they want right now. It's just a matter of when they can get this first Roche, because usually with Tuscar lineups, it's the second Roche that you end the game with. So you want the first Roche, so you get the second Roche faster. So it's more so just that I said them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So <laughs> if if I lose my prediction, I'll, it'll be because I was led astray. It feels so, right now like Optic kind of have more of the momentum their way and are getting a bit more, but that's where they need to be. Like in a sense, like the yeah. game feels quite even because Optic's only oh, slightly sure. ahead. For sure, I just I, I didn't envision the game playing out the way it did in regards to like Optic kind of just spreading the map with their heroes and then taking one big fight with Huskar. Yeah, I mean they've got Deso TA, so they can definitely easily rush now. Yeah, mm -hmm. the TA's rich. Blink Deso 17 minutes. In. Oh, meanwhile, for LGD, more flame. Yeah. Got his Lincolns. I think the scary thing is when Husker and TA get their BKBs, I imagine Husker probably after Satanic gets it, TA probably after Deso, they, they don't really do anything against BKBs with their lineup. They do not. They might just go one BKB between the two of them, so Omni Knight like, deals with sure. the other yeah, one. Yeah, that's true, they've got the repel. But uh, Husker's a hero that BKB is, like, makes you almost impossible to kill, but at the same time he has like such efficient damage items that he can buy because of how his passive works. So. Uh, it's uh, I, if if I had to choose one hero getting a BKB, it would be TA. I feel yeah. like LGD can itemize a lot just to deal with physical. Because you look at Optic and they have no magic. It's yeah. really just the physical damage from Hustle. Burning Spears, TA. man. Burning Spears do add up. <laughs> it is true they do add up. They hurt to heroes like Tide that like rely on you know debuffing. Yeah. But on the, on, rid of them. for the most part, you know they don't have like that magic team fight. So I think like Halberd. For Halberd's sure. probably like, the best item in the game for LGD. I think Tide had a queued up already. Yeah, two too. range cores definitely signals Halberd. Yeah. And he, yeah, you're right. He does. Yeah. 
All right, LGD smoking up now. They're going to fight headlong into Optic. CCNC might be in position to break this. As Ame finds a kill on PPD, but the more important action up here near the Roshan pit. Sentry gets dropped down. They do get the jump on Soxa, but the Omni Knight's in position. The Ravage coming through will connect there on the Huskar, but Zai able to... Dodge Zai stay Yules alive. Like, no, is that Zai's Yules? No, that's not Yules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. his own Yules. That was a sick so is the Pucks. I knew I Puck is a Yules. Yeah. I thought it was Pucks. No, he went drums. <laughs> He's got Yule too. He oh my god, they have the same build. They have yeah, I, I, I was both. getting ready to... I thought it was actually like a mis miscoordination from LGD. Yeah. That was really nice from Zai. I thought he was trying to use the like the Yules on the Omni Knight to make sure he didn't do yeah. anything I'm to I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I I assumed it was Zai, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't see Yules very often on Omni, but... I don't know. Against the Puck Styles, like, other than Nyx, he doesn't get disabled. And he can dodge Ravage, apparently. Yeah, that's another application of the Eels. Yeah, good. That's point blank as well. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was, like, predicted by Zai. Could good. have very easily been two kills there, and with Omni dead, you can take Roche or take the team, maybe take the team fight. You don't really have the best Roche lineup. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pr simply trying to stop Optic from getting Roche. Yeah. Well, now you know Ravage is down. Coil, I guess, coming back soon. <laughs> yeah, there he, yeah, there he is. The best Let's up the Halberds. Quadruple Halberd build going. <laughs> Let's go. Looks nice. It's just so value on Huskar. You get so much from the strength because of the health regen from your uh, first ability. It's a it's a lot of strength on Halberd. Too. Yeah, it, it is. So it's damage. Times. It's it's 16 yeah. strength and 25 damage, I think. So it's a it's a serious damage item with his attack speed built in. Yeah. And then the evasion is obviously a even nice perk. Here comes Yao moving in, but the Sentry oh. gonna find him deleted, and potentially more to follow. The Roshan claimed as Pycat snags the Aegis. And they Yules. did trap one with the Yules. Good setup on QQQ. Yep. Two kills right back the way of Optic to go with that rush. I'm telling you, this is a Huskar dream. This is the dream Huskar game, like the way it's played out. Spare Vessel coming out soon on Night Stalker too, so they're getting the tools that they want to deal with that more play. And this could just be the Aegis to take high ground with too. They could Optic. take a later X, like no joke. Like because there's a several. Morphling, they basically have a 4v5 scenario with an a Aegis Huskar, one of the scariest Aegis carriers in the game, because. He like wants to play at low health, but sometimes he'll be too scared to do so. But now that he has the Aegis, he's willing to sit at really low health, and that just amps up his damage output like yep. significantly. And to top it off, Ravage still cooling down a bit longer here, so Optic wastes no time going high ground. I like the Puck. He, he gets the creep wave coming up next, so he knows if they clear this wave and stop the they push. They have a catapult though, so yeah. You say know. if, and Optic say no. <laughs> Straight onto the tower. Coil committed, but only a stalling coil. Pycat running in through this, he just. Dives in with the help of the Repel, he'll force them on their heels. Now the melee racks being chewed up by CC and C. Where's the hold for LGD? Optic gonna reset. They've done some pretty critical structural Morphling's damage. On the high ground bottom. That's that's key. He's gonna force them back. So they've lost a tier three. Oh wow. Oh, he oh. took a tier three actually. Wow. Not bad, by that's why he went bots. Like as a, 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 I like to try to understand the decisions. In that so he has no intention of fighting them. This little that's puck might be in too far. Phase shift. Doesn't have the blink dagger though. But he wants to pursue this. Yeah, he <laughs> bangs <laughs> the drums to safety. Now the Morphly comes in. They'll find There's PPD the as well. There's the team fight contribution. Exactly how they have to ravage up and Optic. A bit more hesitant to take this one. They could not kill this Huskar. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe once. They can stun him though. Yeah. Run, Is he gonna burn down? It's pretty low. They're gonna drop the ravage. Can they get him once? They got TA. Pie cat. Really nice. There's the Yules. You see, see, played a little ballsy there. Round two, yeah, diving back in onto Ame, just man fight his way through. Oh, they can't yeah. kill this guy. They wouldn't get Raxi. No chance. They, the, the Ravage is used. They're trying to get Raxi while they're still at Aegis, though. And that's this time, LGD do not have that split yeah. threat at bottom. That's a really cool buyback by that, CCNC. I think, yeah, that is really smart. As much as he misplayed by going too aggressive, he... He baited out the Ravage. Yeah, it was all... The Morphling, like, uh, the Morphling turned into Omni and repelled himself. That was pretty funny. They'll, yeah. they'll get Raxi uncontested. And... Yep. This is Huskar. Bottom line, okay. Oh, he still the creep wave. This is exactly what he needs oh, wow. to do. This is like he cannot fight them head on. I like how he look for up. more though. Coil coming out, trying to slow this down while they go for the trade. Now Optic looking for second lane, perhaps they rotate towards the bottom side. Omni's running toward top. Where he's are they going to go? Two he's got yeah. on top tower. Omni might just rat them to death, but it's Optic. A, it's a one hero trade. Do this a trade. bit, a bit quicker. He has to do this with the <laughs> Desolator. They should be able to get the Rex. Can they get back after that? They're diving in. They might just go into Objective a full-on base race at this rate. Melee Rex about to fall. Ame's already brought down the tower. He might get the trade too. Will they back in time? Optic trying to racks. get the hell out. I they can't TP really. They can get canceled. A little he's gonna get, Dota, what but is they can happening? cancel some TPs. Pykai will go back. Try to end this TP. They're gonna catch more. Can Morph. Can he do it? Meanwhile, Zai also being pursued out. out. LGD getting a couple. 
The TA first, the Omni possibly next. Morph did TP. Did don't he get think the he got the rest. He didn't get the rest. Really, no. no. He got it low. Oh, oh look at that damage kills. on the range. Yeah, that was on the melee. Yeah. I mean, not bad for LGD. No, I mean, that's exactly what Morphling has to do. So, I mean, if they got two lanes of racks on Optic and LGD got nothing, this game is like over at this yeah. point. That's exactly how Huskar wins. But the, the, it's... I've lost Huskar games like this where you get like two lanes of racks to their one and they have this split pushing, really hard scaling core. Not it, quite the best case scenario where they get to, to mirror them and get two sets, but it's definitely still still very close. I think yeah. they should. I think LGD runs top. They have Ravage coming up soon. I think they all should run top and yeah. go for that Rex. Yeah, that's so low. They could, and there's no fort. I, yeah, I feel like that's, a, they, that's yeah. Like what they have to do here. Otherwise, they could be in really big risk of losing yeah. this game. Huskar's Aegis should be expiring soon. Another as well. tower for the Morphling. Yeah. Okay. I, 40, 45 seconds. Huskar's gonna have AC soon. I think Morphling finished up the Thero Blade, but gold is almost evened out. Oh, they're not gonna commit top. TA does respawn in time. So Optic holding the Rax advantage. I think if Husker didn't have Aegis, they'd likely go for it, but... Husker is just so threaded. Like, he does so much damage. And I think I just love watching Huskar games because it just... You don't see any other hero games get treated like this where you're just like pushing Rax as five at 20, like 20 minutes and the other team's split pushing because they can't fight you. Maybe Drow, but it's pretty much Huskar. It's the only hero that looks like this. And so Ami, Boy, that, Ami's playing it That's really a well. statement I never thought I'd hear. I love watching Huskar games. You go back to like the, you know, the Frankfurt Major era and uh, not when he's like complete <laughs> not when he's completely broken, but the fact that the fact Please, that he's like no more Huskar. He just like throws a weird wrench into the game that like yeah. Yeah. it just doesn't resemble any other hero in well, terms of how the game looks. That, that's why I, I used to always enjoy watching the Brood games because it was just so unique what Brood yeah. did. Um, to the laning stage that like it's no like musical chairs and yeah. like you know random like throwing yeah. heroes they, hoping they don't these die. These heroes change Dota and how it's played. It's, yeah, it's good. Fog, 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 Fog is just sitting, sitting here shaking his. Couch. <laughs> that couch over there is actually. You know, I don't want to see. I mean, you know, Parker's a meepo player. I'm also player, yeah, so, right? meepo figure, so. <laughs> I don't want to see ten Broodmother games in a row, but you know, yeah, we got the meepo the meepo Huskar Broodmother couch. We can appreciate it every once in a while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Small doses, small doses. But yeah, I mean, now the pace has slowed down, and they're. I mean, Optic's pretty much just gonna have to wait till next Roche, and LGD is gonna probably try to. And Morphling is getting pretty far yeah, now. He's got that. Has e the E Blade, going yeah, going Manta. All of Optic in top though. Manta's so good here. They have like uh, all they have is a silence on Optic, and then also it's Manta's really good against single target physical damage dealers, and they that's all they got. No. They're the Ags on the Omni Knight. Stopping the split push with his guiding angel. There you perhaps. go. That actually that, that's a Force legitimate lens. application of yeah. this game. Yeah, if he had the axe for that last push, they would have probably still lost bottom, but would have taken no damage at all. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yao. Optic, everyone Goodbye. hunting here. They the catch Yao there. out with the Yules, and that'll be the death of the Nyx. Not a, not a big deal, that kill. Crush the cockroach. LGD just going to lose a tier 2 tower and then be pushed to defend their high ground. Optic might go for more after that, but they they have lane problems, so they can't. Yeah, lane problems and no more Aegis. Morphling will get their get to their base before they get to theirs. They want to try to kill him mid, since he showed on the map. Yeah, they know this TA maximum has one hero behind because they know they the Huskar also has to have help. So this is a good opportunity if they see an opening. Yeah, yeah, they did, did complete the assault caress, so Optic continue to they get those building demolition items. Can Morph get back top? They've got the creeps in the base. He can't TP because he can't. He have to be able to be back to base. Yeah. It looks like he's not expecting to be able to get any damage done. He's not even coming back. Yeah, they're not just taking the shrine. The for preparing oh, for yeah. Roche. Yep. More. That's what Morphling was doing too. He was taking the, the dire shrine for some extra gold. Yep. This feels like the critical timing push for Optic to try and get those decisive mega creeps. I think it's all about that next Roche. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if LGD defend, you know. Got a lane of racks of their own. I think LGD try and contest Roche if possible. If Optic gets this Roche, I'm pretty sure yeah. the game's over. Husker but. is going to be KB, so it looks like that he's going over the TA, which is a bit surprising. You can, I kind of agree with you that it felt like the TA is the one who needs it more. I think they're realizing that TA is the one getting focused, so they're like ready to have Omni Knight repel him. But at the same time, I agree. I, I definitely think TA. If I had to choose one, yeah. it would be her, but they can't kill I, Huskar. He's got to say that I think it's, it's worth them yeah. both getting BKB just because this Roche fight oh, can... Q, 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 they're going to try to end the game in the next yeah. like 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And BKB could do that for you. Yeah, for sure. But but goes down. Cool. Not be a Roche out of it. I'm surprised he hasn't upgraded his boots on Huskar, even this late in the game, because like, I, I, he must be wanting to possibly save for bots while like accelerating his BKB timing. It's just like, treads are so effective on that hero. 
And like since they're trying to end the game. Oh. Split push up top, gonna force TA's TP. Hurricane Pike on the TA. Meanwhile, I'm a pressuring CC and C here. Just force that TP back. Even though he's actually alone. Though slowing the game down nicely is the Morphling. So that dance around the Roshan pit continues. Yeah, so Optic knows what they need to do. You see them drawing the line. Push out top lane and make sure they don't have to deal with Morphling split push while they go for Rosh. I wonder if this is one of the first Puck games that we see that doesn't have a Blink Dagger, even at like the 28 minute mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, he just picked it up. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he, could. Oh, he, died. he still didn't, yeah. Dagon Shivas, yeah. Yeah, he's never, he's just not calling it. I thought I just saw him grab it, so. If he, like, gets silenced, even with the Yules, he can, like, still just get bursted, because. I actually, I actually like like the tank up puck build this game because they don't have much mobility on OG or on Optic, so yeah. I think they're just trying to limit the physical damage too. The Dagon's decent to burst off one of the supports, but yeah. the like Shiva's the, guard very good for. There's physical. a Solar Crest on the Undying too. Yeah, just the main downside down seems to be the inability to kill the Omni Knight, like not having that gap closer. But he's actually got Grief, so he's going to be able to purge yeah, off the Omni Knight's like so. T he's got the Yule. Yule's angry. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got so many ways of keeping himself it's alive. It's actually not. The, the blink is not gonna help. Alright, well, can, LGD, yeah. they've only got a second or two to get to this pit. In fact, it's probably already too late. Yeah. Arosh is just gonna melt, and again, it's Pycat claiming the Aegis. This is kind of one of the spots where if I, I don't know how LGD holds. Are they gonna take a fight? Morphling is yeah, in the top lane already. They're trying to stop baiting them out, yeah, and now it looks like this melee rack's in trouble now. Optic are not in position to. I don't to think Optic cares. They're gonna go Megas. Megas. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. And Morphling cannot go for mid lane with the T3 tower there. Yeah. And they might even lose somebody on the way back. The puck caught out a little him. bit. He's just buying time. Ogre's looking to cancel TP on the tide. Like, this is great. Well, they do get the melee, the range top for LGD, but now Mega's on the horizon. Is up mid tier too. He can't even bring this either. down. Where does he go now? He heads back towards the bottom lane and waves in that right lane, but the tombstone's going to drop yeah. an optic. Melee. And Jeopardy will fall. Now onto the range. Where's the defense for LGD? Their pace is in shambles. He they died. come back, Morphling comes into the fray, tries to bring down CC and C. Just gonna focus the, the racks here. And... With the stolen TA. Still trying to work on Pycat here, force him on his heels. Now the Ravage coming through, waves on back in, and now commits forward, but Pycat, that's a difficult man fight. Not one I'll make it hope to take. He has to buy back immediately. Three very low, but nobody dead, and Pycat just keeps on fighting, gets the monster kill streak. The racks have been claimed, now Optic are content to back away. They might lose PPD, but a noble sacrifice by the ogre. And weird looks game. like the rest get out of there. That's Huskar it's, game. Yeah, it's, yeah, and I think LGD understands it's a Huskar game, and they can't fight in, so they're trying to do all these cutesy plays. Like they wanted to go for racks while they they stop TPs, then it turned around on them. LGD was the one stopping TP. Uh, Optic were take, stopping TPs while yeah. they took Megas and. I really like how they played it though. They, like, they knew, like you saw the supports on Optic chasing cores on the side of LGD. Yeah. Like you're just not TPing. They knew yeah. they also can't lose Mega Creeps because of that T2 yeah. mid, so... That tier 2 mid was massive. I, yeah. Morphling would have had time to get yep, Megas absolutely. otherwise. And Optic knew this, like, uh, they played yep. it really well. It was the last effort for yep. LGD here. Defend mid. Could be the end. Tommy doesn't have the buyback. Has to be very careful not to get caught out. Husker will dive him deep and... Optic, Bullsing, him. Him, yeah. Yeah. catching him out with the traps, they blow him up, and that's no Morphling for 90 seconds. That's Plenty GG. of time for Optic to end the game. The GG is called. LGD, the struggle character. continues, even with the roster change up. Our struggles continue. God, yeah. My struggle continues. <laughs> okay, I, I'm actually just... You guys told me to go Morphling. Here's the deal. Whatever he says, I'm going <laughs> to oh. disagree with it, and he's either going to get his first prediction right, you know, or I'm going to be I right. I actually was like... I was. Doubtful of picking the morph, but I was like, you know what? I, I can't be wrong if I pick morph. And I'm we we committed it. earlier though. We said like to solve our problem, we're gonna pick morph. Like, I mean, that's Huskar Dota. I, I think uh, I I said in the laning stage that even though LGD was happy with what they were getting, that Optic, like Huskar, is just a hero that needs to not get dumpstered in the in the laning stage because you see it so often. He just gets the tri lane treatment, and as long as he's getting his, he's a scary hero. And, and you saw the fact that Optic just hit their timing so hard, and I think.